<sighs> so where were we? Sound is freaking the fuck out. Hang on. It's like tearing. The sound was tearing. So, final warp room hype. I'm really loving this game. <laughs> I'm coming back to this a lot more than I'm coming back to like any of the other LPs I should be doing. So yeah, we're just gonna... This may take longer than the other parts, but we're just gonna do the whole final warp room. After that, I'm gonna start thinking about um, doing all of the gems. I started off doing all the gems because at the beginning it's really easy to start off doing all of the gems. Then you get to like the point where it's like, uh, got to do all of these hidden gem paths and death routes and shit and you like have to, yeah, it's just, it's really complex. Oh yeah, I forgot about these dudes. This is a whole thing. They looked really bad in the original. They wiggle their butts at you because but humor. I just don't understand. How many lab assistants does he have? That's the question. Ooh. You see they start getting a bit getting fancy with their shit. No. No. Oh, oh, my depth perception is just miles off, isn't it? So yeah, you can see there's a, there's a lot of backtrack. <laughs> uh, used to be able to use it a very different way. Oh, oh. Used to be able to use the double jump for recovery. That's why you see me dip really low and then just throw myself in the hole. Oh my god. I might I might be special. There we go. I could feel him touching the box and I was just like, oh, I don't know how he's not eating it. I did it again. I keep trying to do like slow, like last minute jumps, but you've got to like it's now like a really short area. You have to XX, it's not X. And see, I can't do it after that. In the future, there will just be tanks on the streets shooting at randomers. Oh, every day that gets closer to the reality. <laughs> Remember, you have to double jump early. I nearly fucked it up anyway. Now I can go back and get those boxes and you see here. Oh, You thought I was lying? Welcome to the 90s, bitch. It's really flaccid now. It used to explode. And now it's just like, uh, look, you shooting a uh, uh, purple explosion from the fruit. you want to hear my Wampa Fruit Theories? Let's see there's one missing here. Oh, I just can't be bothered up. Fuck it. Uh, what fruit is a Wampa Fruit? Some people think they're apples. These people are wrong. They look like mangoes. They kind of look like apples crossed with mangoes, crossed with peaches, crossed with apricots, but then they revealed them to have purple innards which is like something like a dragon fruit or something. So maybe it's just every tropical fruit. Ugh. Finding it very hard getting that double jump out like I used to. Ugh. I used to fly much further. Ugh. Oh, oh, okay, so you're just horrible. <laughs> Side tornadoes. I'm 
sorry. Am I saying up there? No. Huh? I feel like they're saying further down. We're obviously not going to get all the boxes anyway on this one. Oh. Ugh. I got scared. So, uh, yeah, at some point we'll go back and we'll, I will show how to do a lot of the gem shit if I can be bothered, that is. Uh. Ah, I'm so glad. So glad I got this. Really just helps you with a lot of this. Dom, dom, dom. It, it means that any of the stuff that you think, oh, it's, that's really annoying, risky, trick shot shit, you can now just go, oh, I'll just, I'll just snipe the box from over here. Because it's all about breaking the boxes, not getting the contents. So if it's just break all the boxes to get to the mid gem, you know, those levels where it's like, you can jump across this box bridge, or you can, you know, or, you know, for the bonus level, now you've got the option of not doing that got the option of just saying, ah, oh, fuck it, I'm not going to do that. Oh, why? I don't like those guys, you have to jump really high, it's a real stretch. You can also hit those. I'll show what happens, I, I will try and show what happens if you hit these things. We flip over. So when they're spiky, if they stay spiky and you've got the timing wrong, you can kind of just, uh, I don't want to deal with this shit. Problemo solved. I just, uh, oh, this, is, this involves timing, I don't want to do it. Oh, there we go. Don't have to do it. Kind of ruins the game, late game, if you, you know, but like, if you're speed running and you're doing the relics, you can't sit there and pull out the gun and all that shit anyway. So, I mean, it doesn't completely throw off the balance. And some of the levels, you, you're you on a vehicle and you can't use that audio. Oh, sh look at this. Look at this. Ooh. He fucked it up then. Obviously, I don't know if it works against the biggies. <laughs> yeah, that's all I expected. Um, and I missed the load. But we got to the end. We got the crystal. First run, we're just basically trying to get to the end of the game. Because, like I said at the beginning, I was doing stuff. And uh, once you get past like walkroom one, it starts to become very clear that they're expecting you to come back for certain gems. Like you need to be in a death route in walkroom two things over, you know? Or like uh, you need to have like gotten a secret gem which you haven't been introduced to, like, well, not like that one. But you know, you know what I mean, colored gems, man. Colored gems like that. How am I supposed to do the green gem route, which is in a completely different level? I think it's in like Walkroom 3 or something. Straight up basically just locks off progress until you've 100%ed. Well, you've 100%ed the main story, which is not 100%. Uh, it's time to race. Oh, now the cops move. Yeah, <laughs> cops moving goalposts, how topical. Fucking pigs. Speaking about hassling cops, something I shouldn't be speaking about. Uh, oh. Uh, yeah, I have this horrible track record of accidentally pissing off cops in a country, I live in China, where they can literally just fucking arrest you if you piss them off. They don't have to have a reason, so it's kind of funny when everyone's well, not funny. It's kind of like um, weird seeing. Well, I, how am I gonna phrase this? It's like 
when you sit in a country where like totalitarianism and oppression is just standard and they can just do whatever the fuck they want without any repercussions and they literally just go yeah we'll just fucking kill you we don't care and that's their general attitude and they can just do that and they're super racist when people are like oh yeah it sucks in america right now it's like yeah it sucks but at least you're allowed to say it sucks and you don't get shot for doing that like I'm not saying, oh, well, you never understand my pain because obviously I could just fucking leave, so it doesn't affect me. But <laughs> this, this changes subject. I'm not trying to sound like I'm like, oh, well, they think they got it bad. No, I, I don't mean that. I mean, it just... Cops everywhere seem to have decided that they don't need to pay attention and can just go around threatening people with violence, which is lovely. <laughs> Absolutely fucking lovely. I've got stories of mates in Taiwan who got pepper sprayed because they were reporting a crime. <laughs> by a cop pepper sprayed in the face because he was pissing him off and wasting his time isn't that nice anyway let's talk about something a little less disturbing than the horrible police state we all live in now globally where cops just feel like they can just fucking shoot us and threaten us with violence because they have a gun and a uniform because that's getting pretty universal now so that's two I just talked about cops for that. Recently I was in China, e-bike drivers just drive up the wrong side of the road and there's like these bike lanes that flank the main road. So they just drive out of the fuck they want to drive and no one tells them, no one says dick about shit about it. Uh, I do it one time because it's literally like two, two yards. Oh, I fucked this up. Oh, I didn't. I don't know how I didn't fuck this up. Um, because it was literally two yards to the junction and I was coming out of a parking thing and a little racist little cop in his little piggy outfit was like, no, no, and waving at me like, ugh, fucking fuck. And they just use racist terminology here for everybody. So, uh, so everybody that's non-Chinese and call it their culture. So literally having a cop throw racist slurs at me and waving his arm at me so I pull my bike over because he's a cop and they can just fucking, they just stood in my path and I was like, great, so I'm going to get shot for being white now, that's great. <laughs> like, you know, um, oh, you can just trivialize these guys as well by shooting them. Great, great timing, right? Talking about cops trivializing humans by shooting them. Uh, so one of them I didn't shoot. It's the one that maybe set me out my ass on fire. Great. Uh, yeah, so he's just blocking the route and waving at me and trying to make out, haha, <laughs> fucking white person, so fucking stupid, they're an inferior race and all of this crap. And while he literally can't say a word other than mine, you're going the wrong way, idiot. And like, I'm like, oh yeah, let's just ignore the waves of Chinese people doing exactly the same thing. And all this traffic's obviously coming the opposite direction as well. And he's like, I got off my bike, and he's just waving frantically at me whilst I'm trying to manually handle my bike around. So I just stop <laughs> and just start doing the same insulting gesture back to him in the opposite direction. And his his cop mate starts laughing at him from the car that they're sat in. And I'm just thinking, oh, this is how I get shot. This is how I get shot, you know, because they can just, this is the kind of shit they do. Oh, he's mocking me. He's mocking me. I can, I can just now do violence because he's, he's mocking me. And um, he turns around and then I've manual handled the bike around at this point. Just in time kind of thing. Um, and I just look over my shoulder and say, traffic. Because there was a wall of like bikes coming towards me. So I clearly couldn't just turn around. I was stationary waiting to turn around and he was waving at me like, you're a fucking moron because of your skin color. And I was like, great. <laughs> like, you know, awesome. Good to know. And uh, then I was pointing in the same way that he was like, ooh, 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 like a fucking like dictatorial little shit. <laughs> I was just like, and so I did the same to him. And he looked real pissed. And then as I was leaving, I looked at my shoulder and said, traffic. <laughs> like, you know, and just walked away. And I just said to all my mates over here, if you never see me again, it's because a small dicked cop with a uniform on got really fucking offended because he couldn't just mock me, you know? 
and get away with it. Like, you know, you couldn't just stand blocking an entire road off going, fucking white skin, get out of the fucking way. <laughs> like, you know? And, like, I just turned around and I was like, yeah, I can't turn around the bike right now, though, can I? Because there's traffic trying to get by. So it just became this really awkward standoff, and I was just like, whatever, mate, I'm fucking done. That's, that's only one of about five different encounters recently with, like, s cops and more cops that I've been having recently in China because they've gotten super racist over here. It's like they heard, oh, wow, there's rioting in America at the moment because they're being racist and intolerably horrible. I know, we should do that to our foreign populations because they've gotten real bad. They used to be okay. Like, the Chinese are terrified of their own police force, because people, they straight up have a Gestapo over here. They straight up people disappear in the middle of the night, and are never spoken of again, and never existed. And that happened a lot during the COVID stuff. Uh, because a lot of doctors came out saying things that the government didn't like, like, we knew COVID was going to happen. <laughs> and they were like, um, how about you don't say that? And I was like, oh, okay, cool, cool story, bro. And you hear all these rumors, I don't know anything about it because I'm not allowed to know anything about it. Um, but like, I don't, I don't think it was that COVID was like engineered or anything. I think it was a case of a cop, uh, a doctor warned about it like in October saying it could be a risk and no one paid attention to him. Then it was a risk in like November, December of this year over here. And he was like, I told you so, and the government doesn't like I told you so over here. They like being pretending that they're all knowing. Kind of like North Korea's government. They like to pretend they know everything. And if you say otherwise, and that they're not god beings, they get really shitty. So yeah, you can see I've been just trivializing a lot of these areas by just shooting everything, which is a... Uh, kind of like this, it's just busted this. You see, they're trying to put an overhang here, so you can't, you can still hit it. Uh, anyway, like, other things that is probably going to make me get disappeared that I'm just going to talk about on a YouTube channel that no one watches. Uh, at least I get a view. <laughs> the government has to view it. <laughs> did I get all the boxes? Oh, I did the Winnie the Priest there again. Yeah, like, I have a lot of problems. I've never been hassled by cops in my entire life because I'm a white guy. So, like, I live in, like, a, the UK my whole life. The cops are sleepy over there. And they're not going to just bother a white guy walking down the street. But, like, when you move to another country, you start to realize how fucking unsafe you feel if you're not the majority race. So that's my two penneth worth. I mean, it's nowhere near, like, I'm getting, like threatened and murdered by the cops just for driving, but there have been situations where I'm like, am I going to have to run? <laughs> like, you know, am I going to have to move very quickly from this position? There have been knocks on my door where I've gone, I'm not answering that. to know. As he literally has the same powers as Akuraku, it's pretty much like, oh, I, I, was gonna, I told myself I was going to show Coco's plane for this, and I just jumped in mindlessly because I'm too busy talking about shit that's going to get me much fucking murdered by a government. Ugh. There's the button. They actually changed the button. Circle used to be barrel roll, square used to be shoot. Now it's like, X is barrel roll. Oh, you got, yeah, you got to shoot the, you got to shoot the engines. You can just off-screen these guys and they can't shoot you, so you just keep turning. And they can only hit you for as long as they're on screen. I know. Dumb and busted. But, like, a lot of games do that. And, like, this is one of the first games I was introduced to where it was, like, very obviously this. It's like, oh, if I just ignore you, you're not there. And they're often hard to hit. And they do some damage before you can get get your shots on because they're small moving targets. 
It doesn't matter if you don't hit all of the engines at the same time, just hit them and then... It just is going to take longer if I keep hitting one and then moving, you know? And the, the, the gun used to be faster and, like, a little bit more accurate and damaging, I feel. So there's another one. There might have been another one. I hit it. Let's go after it. There we go. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I can say, I doubt I'm ever going to be able to honestly sit down and say that it was as bad as it was, but I've heard of stories and I've had knocks on my door in this country where I've called up my landlady soon after the knock on the door and said, is anyone coming around for maintenance? And she's like, no. Nah. So, well, who else could it be because it's a COVID crisis? So it's not like there were any delivery men hanging out at that time. And I hadn't ordered anything. <laughs> so I was like, and no one I know knows where I live. I deliberately don't tell people where my house is because I don't like people just appearing on my doorstep. My house is a private space and I deliberately make sure no one knows my address, even my employer. So, um... I'm like, who's hammering at my door then? And they're like, we haven't sent anyone. And it's like, they're hammering it like they're trying to keep the door down. And I'm just sat there like, I am not answering this door. <laughs> you know, just like, I am straight up not answering this door. Because I've heard stories, you know. It's basically how it goes. I've heard stories, and I don't like the stories I've heard. Sure, I'm probably not important enough to be, you know, somebody that they're going to go and try and, like, I'm not exactly creating a political agenda, but I do do sh stupid shit and, like, badmouth a lot of people and get in trouble with some people for no real reason. Other than they tried to hassle me. I'm sat minding my own business in a place I'm supposed to be sitting minding my own business. And they're like going up to me and screaming race hate at me. And saying move along, move along, fuck you. And I'm just like no, fuck yourself. And you're not allowed to say that. It's part of their culture to be racists. We live in a very strange world. We live in a world where... Certain groups of people will be called out for being incredibly racist, which is fair. And then, like, other groups of people will be completely ignored. And it will be pretty much just like, oh, yeah, I guess that's their culture. You can't, I can't understand it, you know? And it's just like... And it's just like, but this is dangerous too this is dangerously racist they literally get taught that they're the master race in their history lessons they get taught an alternative form of history and they literally get taught that they're the best race in the world and they're evolved from a different type of monkey that's nazi shit <laughs> like you know and the attitude is just oh. well you know this isn't as hard as i remember it being but it might just be really long I think if you lose a bug, you're just fucked, basically. Okay, so we're here. Got to the bonus level. Uh, yeah, but I've got, like... I'm not the kind of person who hassles cops. I'm just kind of like, yeah, man, I talk to them like they're people, because in our culture and in our country... You can do that, and they won't pull a gun on you. But I've had a few situations when I first got here, especially, um, where I did that, and the response I got from the local Chinese was basically, do you want to fucking die? And I'm like, what are you on about? What's wrong with what I'm doing? And they're like, you can't talk to Chinese cops like that. They can just fucking arrest you and have you killed for no reason. And I'm like, what? Talk to them like they're people. And they're like, yes. You should be talking like yes sir, no sir, feedback's full sir to them. I fucked that up because I didn't have a uh, bug. You can see what happens when the bug goes. Yeah, it's real bad. 
And like they were terrified when I was just sat there laid back in my chair saying, Oh, you're all right, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's how I talk to people. And the, the cop just looked like he didn't give a shit. Like the cop just looked at me like, Oh, it doesn't matter. It's not like it's important. He was just doing, he's one of those desk job guys who's very old, very near retirement, and he was just like, yeah. And the Chinese reaction to a cop is, you can't talk to them like that. They'll fucking murder you. And it's like, you mean if you just, I'm not even sassing them, you know? I think this person was just really, she was from Tibet, so you can imagine. <laughs> like, they're probably like, oh, yeah, no, we would just get fucking killed. It's pretty, like, rough down here, like, for that. It was chill in Qingdao. Very foreign, a tourist area, so they're, like, told not to be that racist. But, um, people still stare at you and spit at you and take photos of you and shit. Um, I do a final boss now. This is gonna be hard. I remember this boss being really hard. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot, like, these guys have their own battle in the middle, and it's actually really makes... This makes that shit way harder. If it was just Cortex, but it's these two having their own anime battle in the bottom here. I forgot about them entirely. They, they, that's what makes it hard because it's a rotating kind of... One of those you can... Oh yeah, you can spin him now. Oh, and then you knock him into the hole. you got to keep knocking him into the hole and shit. And then they do a different thing now. It's just very hard, especially if you don't have any masks. And it doesn't like giving you masks for bosses unless you've died like 10 times. And it's just... Ugh. It's one of the better Cortex fights, though. It's memorable. It's interesting. You know, stuff happens. Ugh. Oh, I was too late because these guys were kind of doing their thing. Like, it's at least memorable. Like, stuff is happening on screen. The first fight with Cortex is just him on top of a blimp shooting stuff at you. Ugh. And then, yeah, it's this whole herding him down the hole. And then I fuck it up and I get him stuck in a corner and then he's rebounding and you have to do that whole section again. If that didn't exist... Oh. If that didn't exist, uh, the whole herding him in, it would be a much easier fight. Oh. Anyway. It's just it's just a lot of stuff. <laughs> this 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 one's the worst I find because they they're taking up so much space, so much real estate with their beam. Oh, got caught in the explosion.
Anyway, yeah. Uh, what else can I talk about? Hassling cops. I, I, I say it's hassling cops like I'm going up to them like, yeah, fucking pig, yeah, it cause you problems. It's literally I'm just walking by them and being a certain skin color. <laughs> In Hong Kong, I never got shit for that. In China, you get shit all of the time. Like, they literally stop you and demand your papers when you've done nothing wrong. And they're just like, fuck you, show us your ID. Fuck you, fuck you, trying to, like, steal your bike and shit off of you if you don't have all of your ownership papers straight away. With you at all times and your passport. They're like, no, fuck you, then it's not your bike, now it's my bike, fuck you. That's why you can't have nice things in China. That's why I wouldn't buy a nice bike in China, because it would be a cop's bike soon afterwards. It's really corrupt and racist. <laughs> That's why I'm trying to leave. <laughs> you know, basically. Now the best thing to do is to pay attention to the order he throws these and follow and cut in behind this way. Because if you wait for the last one to blow up, he will have recovered from his mind-throwing dizzy spell. Which is very difficult to understand. He gets, like, some of these guys just get inexplicably tired, and they haven't even done a particularly heavy lifting or, like, hardcore thing. Oh yeah, this one where they just suddenly called mini explosions everywhere. Ugh. Ugh. This is all very close. Doing this is fucking well. I'm pretty sure his recovery speeds and shit, they give, and these getting him down the whole thing, they, they give you less time each time. But I did it. It's, it was easier this time, I think, than than the last time I did. So yeah, now we got the speed running tech. It felt easier than it was before. I reckon if you fall down that hole, you can have to do the boss fight again. Yeah, so like if you beat him without all the gems and all of that stuff, you get this um, thing where he's like, ha ha ha, I still have a chance to triumph, you have to 100% the game. And then you 100% the game, he's like, ah, oh, what shit. <laughs> that's like every, that's every Crash Bandicoot game. I can still win. Like, um... And what's weird is the canon ending for part 2, Crash Bandicoot 2 even, uh, is you... The canon ending is if you 100%ed the game and got all the gems. Because then Embryo's ray blows up his space station. If you don't do that, you just stop him from winning and then he's still got his space station in the air. But you see at the beginning of part 3 here, it is falling down and crashing into it. Like, so it's very clear that like that's the canon ending. And assuming he actually rescues Torna, even though Torna is never seen ever again, post, um, uh, post, uh, Crash 1 in the original canon, it's assumed that he saved her, and you can only save her if you get every single gem in the game. So, it's, like, very often the true ending is only if you, like, do everything. Some really like banging tunes in the first, second, and third Crash game. I really like that stuff. Yeah. Sorry, I ruined this final part by talking about racist cops <laughs> a lot. But I wanted to tell my weird anecdotes. Whereas literally like I'm just sat chilling. One of my mates he was just sat chilling by a light on his bike waiting for the light to change. And this like golf buggy, because they have golf buggies over here of cops. The least threatening vehicle ever. They got a little golf buggy with a siren on it that can only do about 30 miles an hour. 
are just sat there and they're all staring at him, like looking to see if he's doing anything that they can catch him to do. And he's just sat there like, oh, this is how I fucking die. They're really, they're like, it's getting real bad over here. Someone had a lot of babies. Production babies. Yeah, it, it's getting really intolerant over here, which is one of my reasons why I'm like, I'm starting to feel like, starting to feel like it's time to go to somewhere where I won't get shot for having a skin color. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> um, it's feeling very like nationalistic over here at the moment. Very like, very right wing, very racist. And they're getting a lot of propaganda for it at the moment saying it's the Americans fault. for like everything it's always the americans fault over here it's always white or black people's fault over here even when it's clearly not <laughs> like you know they just they just lie and then they say you saying we're lying you'll go to the gulags for lying saying that we're lying government never lies even when they're clearly lying they're not allowed to say that's a lie there's no contradiction here you can't you can't have satire, you can't have like people questioning, so just that happens and you just have to deal with it. So that's fun. <laughs> Totalitarianism, am I right? What a great way to run a country. Yeah, it's not fun. So I want to leave somewhere where they're a little more chill and like Virtually all of my friends who, like, I made over here have left China for over a year and have been, like, you know, for over a year plus, that's the same thing, being, have been out of China and I'm like, dude, how's this? And he's like, it's way better. Like, every person I've met, every person I've stayed in touch with or I chat to on my uh, phone and shit. They're like, oh no, it's way better over here. And like, you know, everywhere, all over the place. Like, um, mostly the Southeast, some are, some are in Japan now, some are in, uh, a couple of guys are in Korea. And they're all just sitting there saying, yeah, why are you still there? It's better over here. You get paid virtually the same or an equivalent amount of money. And I don't feel like I'm gonna be woken up at two in the morning and get shot. <laughs> For just being a skin color, you know. I mean, it might not be that bad over here, but it's starting like my paranoia is starting to peak a lot because we're getting a certain look from people, you know. And like the cops just they don't refer to you like hello, friend, they literally just scream at you a racist term. Like, and I've literally stopped more cops before and said, You fucking say that to me again. Because it's literally just race hating term. It's a racist term. They'll just wave at you and just scream a racist term across a room at you. And everyone's looking at you and giggling nervously like you're the problem. It's like the casual racism's not the problem here. Um, it's really fucking bad. It's like don't bother learning foreign people's names, don't bother like talking to them like they're human beings. Just bark a racist term across a room at them it's fucking racist and like it's like for every every group of people who aren't chinese in this country they treat them like they're dogs and then they're just like oh i don't get why people get funny like and then it's really annoyingly two-faced when you then see the same people going over to our countries and go, why are we being treated like better than the locals are being treated? I don't understand. It gets a bit like you start to feel like, mm, I've lived in your country and you treat people like crap. <laughs> like, you know? But like, yeah, definitely everyone should be treated equally. And they're like, no, no, no. I should be being given more money because I'm the master race. And you're like, you came over to an, like a predominantly black or white country and then sat down and said, I'm the master race. That's fucking amazing. You meet some people like this, they're really dumb. I had one guy, uh, he used to work in teaching with me and then he became a farmer for some reason because he's a bit eccentric like this. And uh, he said to me at a random point, he's Chinese, 
he said to me at a random point, hey, can you get me a job abroad? And I was like, no, because I live here. Like, I can't get a job abroad. I live here. And he's like, oh, I just heard that it's really easy for, like, me to earn money abroad. So, and this guy, he doesn't speak any English. He speaks, like, two phrases in English. And, like, he's like, you know, I was telling him how things are going in various countries, how I'm getting job, getting interest in various countries like Vietnam and Thailand and stuff and Korea because I keep in touch with him as an English teacher. He's like, oh, do you think guys in Vietnam need a Chinese teacher? And you're just looking at him like, how, what, how, <laughs> like, you know, and he's like, yeah, yeah, I think they would. And you're thinking, for those who don't know, the Vietnamese hate the mainland Chinese. They hate them more than they hate Americans or French people. That's how much they hate them. They have monuments to how much they hate the Chinese. They're really, like, if they're going to be a dick to anybody, it's Chinese people. I mean, they're nice people in general from what I've experienced, so I doubt they will have a problem, but, you know, you know what, best times for everything. This is really long because I realize it's for the whole game. I doubt there's a stinger. Yeah, so it's like, he's telling me he doesn't have a word of English. He doesn't know any Vietnamese. He's very disrespectful to virtually every person I've met that's not Chinese. He's one of these high-level patriot lunatics, you know? Oh, shit. I was trying to do the run. We'll try to run in there. We're going to do some quick time trials. I'll save it. I'll save and cut. Uh...